Well, it's a look at the week in federal politics and the latest in Canada's response to the pandemic. I'm joined now by three MPs from the different parties. William Amos is a Liberal MP for the Quebec riding of Pontiac, and he's also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Science. Karen Vecchio is a Conservative MP for the Ontario riding of Elgin, Middlesex, London, and she's her party's Deputy House Leader. And Jenny Kwan is the NDP member for Vancouver East and her party's Deputy Health Critic. All three of you, thanks for joining us. Thank you Thanks so for much. Having us. Okay, I want to start with something today. Uh, we had a briefing from the uh, Public Health Agency of Canada. Uh, William Amos, it, would, it seems without, it's clear beyond a doubt that for most of the country now, we are well into this third wave of the pandemic. We had some continuing questions this week about uh, supply of vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, the minister is saying that the, she believes that that's been dealt with, but there's still a lot of insecurity there. What would you say is the government's message as we stand now to Canadians with regards to this pandemic? Well, I think everyone recognizes that Canadians are tired. The Canadians are, are hurting. They just want this to be over. Uh, and so the outlook can be frustrating at times, uh, but we're, we're just so close to that finish line. Um, and we just need to keep going, make sure that we uh, do our part, uh, continue following the, the public health guidance, um, and also have confidence that the vaccines uh, are coming in as expected. Uh, we said that we would have six million by the end of March. We'll be we're well on track to get uh, to get eight million. So there's going to be turbulence uh, week by week. Uh, the Moderna example uh, this week is is you know one such example. But as M uh, Minister Anand confirmed, uh, we will be getting those doses a little later next week. Overall picture: the vaccines are coming. We're well on track to get everyone vaccinated by September, uh, and we just need to keep doing our bit individually, as families, uh, as community members, because we, we're just that close. Okay, uh, Karen Vecchio, for you, what is the most pressing concern uh, concerning the pandemic, where we stand now, and the government's response? Well, first of all, I really appreciate Will's optimism. I just wish everybody else felt that way and Canadians felt that way. Canadians are tired of this and we are looking for clarity. Uh, Minister Anand had mentioned one thing on, on the Wednesday that we'd have more than on the, the Thursday change where it was. We know that we're having problems getting those vaccines from the, the EU and we're asking for clarity. There are over 100 countries that have agreements that they are not going to have issues. Canada does not happen to be one of those. So there needs to be some sort of uh, we need to have clarity. We need to be insured. And then we know that there's issues with the vaccines coming in from India as well. So although we hear about these numbers that are coming in, it's pretty hard to put doses in arms when they are not even shipped into Canada yet. So I, too, would be like to, like to be optimistic like Will. It's just that we have not seen this actually pan out as the, the government has uh, predicted. OK, Jenny Kwan, as a deputy health critic for the NDP, uh, you were raising issues of, of the pandemic today. What's, uh, what's on your mind as we enter, as we had this briefing today from the Canada Public, the Public Health Agency of Canada? Well, I have to tell you, Canada is way behind eight ball and, and behind other countries. Take, for example, in the U.S., most Americans have been vaccinated and Canada Canadians are still waiting at home. Uh, we are into a third wave, and that is hugely concerning. And the fact is we needed vaccines like yesterday. And I think the crux of the issue is this, that we don't have dom domestic production here in Canada. That is a huge problem. Canada had a great vaccine producer about 50 years ago in in fact, we were world leaders. Connaught Labs produced insulin, vaccines for TB, inoculants for polio, and so on. Then it was privatized by the conservatives, sold to a British multinational. And now we're in the situation where we're reliant on other countries to produce the vaccine. And so consequently, we're in this sort of on again, off again. Is it coming? Is it not coming? Is it delayed? Uh, and so on. And that just creates a lot of uncertainty. And the other thing, too, is that the Auditor General's report, and this was a damning Auditor General's report mm -hmm. that clearly stated that there were outstanding, long-standing issues uh, that had never been addressed for more than two, two decades. That means both the Liberals and the Conservatives have failed Canadians. And now with COVID-19, Canadians did not get the proper early warnings, surveillance, risk assessments, data sharing, uh, and so on. And you know what? This is not good. And, you know, to not have issued an alert uh, to provide early warnings uh, when COVID was first emerged uh, and to use a assessment tools designed for domestic outbreak when it was clear a international one. That is just absolutely astounding. And Canadians have been failed by uh, 
government and uh, by uh, uh, PHAC. Okay, William Amos, uh, let's talk about that yeah. because that made a lot of headlines yesterday. Uh, the Auditor General's report, uh, Karen Hogan pointing out those uh, that the public health agency at the beginning of this pandemic was ill-prepared, under-equipped, wrong tools in terms of pandemic prediction, uh, unable to track people who were supposed to be quarantined uh, when they were ordered to self-isolate or quarantine. How do you go about restoring public confidence when you see a, a damning report like that from the Auditor General? Well, first off, I think we have to thank the Auditor General for her report and for her findings. Uh, and we have to recognize also that uh, uh, the report goes to the Government of Canada's pandemic response up to June of 2020. So it's an early stage assessment. Um, and we've been very clear. We've always worked to protect Canadians. We've always adapted uh, our COVID-19 response based on the latest science, based on the latest, uh, latest public health measures. Uh, and, and we've been strengthening this response uh, by leveraging expertise of virologists, uh, frontline healthcare workers, researchers. Um, and the whole point has been to keep Canadians safe. So we're, we, we want to be very clear. We accept all of the Auditor General's recommendations. We're going to continue to uh, work with those recommendations to shape our response to COVID-19 going forward. Uh, and it's a reminder of the impact uh, and importance of investing in, in public health. We can't predict when the next public health crisis will come, but we can invest in prevention and preparedness and be ready for, for the next crisis. So, um, you know, we're going to continue to take action as we have uh, uh, since June 2020 to improve our, our systems. And, and I'm, I'm optimistic that we're going uh, we're going to be able to better ourselves. That's what Canadians expect. Uh, and we're going to continue moving in that direction. Okay, I'd like to go to another, the other big event from yesterday, and that was the Supreme Court of Canada's decision uh, reaffirming the constitutionality of the uh, Trudeau government's carbon pricing regime. Karen Vecchio, your leader, Aaron O'Toole, has said he will scrap the carbon pricing regime if your party is uh, as government. Uh, he will scrap the existing regime, which the court has found to be totally constitutional. Uh, when are you going to have an alternative to propose to Canadians? Absolutely. We've been working on that alternative. I know that in the 2019 election, people will say we didn't show enough. There is a lot of meat to the bones when we're going to be looking at this climate policy. Uh, the climate change policy is something that's very important, not just to our party, but to all Canadians. Uh, I look at my own children and I'm wanting to ensure that we do have policies that are collaborative with our provinces. But when we talk about the carbon tax, we still look at that is one way of addressing climate change. It is a way that impacts consumers. It is a way that impacts residents. And in my writing at Elgin Middlesex, London, the impact to businesses. And we know that as of April 1st, that carbon tax is hiked up once again. So we can take the money out of people's pockets or we can come up with other ideas. And the green technologies, uh, carbon sequestering, there's so many different things that we can do. I've been out there working on the ground. I know that Aaron has, our, our leader, and many other members of our Cox and our party coming up with real plans that we can implement so that we can actually have a substantial change to what's happening with our climate change and work to make sure that we're ensuring that our country is safe and the whole world is safe from the devastations of climate change. Okay, uh, Jenny Kwan, I'd like to get your reaction to that uh, Supreme Court ruling and what it means for the uh, country's approach to uh, climate change. Well, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, climate change is a national concern. Uh, and this, I think, reflects what Canadians are thinking uh, and are concerned about as well. But what we need, of course, is meaningful action from the Liberal government. The Conservatives uh, at their last convention, they're still talking about whether or not climate change is real. Uh, mm, the reality so much, is right. this, though. With the Liberal, Liberal government, Canada has missed every single climate target that we have set. And the Liberals are not on track to meet our current weak targets. Uh, the Liberals have stated their climate plan on the carbon tax, uh, and while putting a price on pollution is important, but it is not nearly enough. Look, the Prime Minister bought a pipeline, and the Liberals are still giving huge subsidies to big polluters, and that's wrong. So instead of the li Liberals expecting the, uh, the carbon tax to be a silver bullet, we need immediate investments in transit, in energy efficiency, homes, in buildings, in clean energy. We need a real plan that supports the workers and create the jobs in communities across Canada. Okay, well, you may must last question on that. Um, as has been pointed out by so many environmentalists and UN bodies and scientists, uh, Canada will not make its uh, climate goals with what's on the table now. Uh, the carbon tax will not suffice, uh, even in its good days. So what else is the government going to roll out? In just a few words, uh, can we expect a lot more rolled out between now and the next election, whenever it comes? Well, I would, I would, I would take issue with that uh, characterization. We are on track to meet and exceed our Paris targets. Uh, and that is because we have uh, a, a now 
constitutionally recognized uh, pricing plan in, in place. It's so important that we got there. The Supreme Court uh, made a very good decision uh, in the interests of all Canadians. And now uh, uh, the Conservatives who have been opposing uh, uh, carbon pricing for so many years uh, are going to have to go back to the drawing board. And instead of litigating and litigating and litigating, helping help us move forward. But it's not just about putting a price on pollution, which of course we are doing in ensuring that Canadians uh, get uh, rebates that are, that, that are more than the cost itself. What Not we true. need to be doing, what we need to be doing, is ensuring that our plan, which was announced by Minister Wilkinson uh, in November, gets uh, implemented. That is what's going to get us to uh, to our Paris targets and beyond. And yes, we will have uh, later on, uh, later on the, this year, uh, uh, and hopefully this spring, uh, new uh, new announcements to make around targets. But Canadians should be very clear: the plan that was announced. A healthy environment, healthy economy. It is a solid, solid plan. Okay. Uh, I, I speak as someone who practiced in the area of environmental law for eight years, uh, generally representing non-governmental organizations uh, in, in matters uh, including up to the Supreme Court. Uh, okay. This is a plan that I stand behind and so does our government. Okay, on that we're going to have to wrap it up. I want to thank all three of you and we will be speaking again. Thank you very much and have a good weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks have a so great much. weekend. Bye.